An agreed-upon starting point is essential, because each party to this long dispute begins the narrative of its claim to the land at a different point in history. This should not be surprising, since nations and peoples who are in conflict generally select as the beginning of their national narrative a point that best serves to support their claims and grievances. When the American colonists sought separation from England, their Declaration of Independence began the narrative with a history of repeated injuries and usurpations committed by the present king, such as imposing taxes on us without our consent, and quartering large bodies of armed troops among us. Those who opposed separation began their narrative with the wrongs perpetrated by the colonists, such as their refusal to pay certain taxes and the provocations directed against British soldiers. Similarly, the Israeli Declaration of Independence begins its narrative with the land of Israel being the birthplace of the Jewish people, where they first attained statehood and gave the world the eternal book of books. The original Palestine National Charter begins with the Zionist occupation and rejects any claim of historical or spiritual links between the Jews and Palestine. The United Nations Partition of Palestine and the Establishment of the State of Israel any attempt to unravel the complexly disputed and ultimately unverifiable historical contentions of extremist Israelis and Arabs only produces unrealistic arguments on both sides. It is, of course, necessary to have some description of the history, ancient and modern, of this land and its ever-changing demographics for no reason other than to begin to understand how reasonable people can draw such diametrically opposed conclusions from the same basic facts on the ground. The reality, of course, is that only some of the facts are agreed upon. Much is disputed and believed to be absolute truth by some, while others believe that its opposite is equally true. 